Hello and welcome to Built on Air, a podcast about all things Airtable. Built on Air is sponsored by OpenSide, a premium provider of products and services supporting Airtable customers. I'm your host, Zoe Vanderplum, and in this episode, we're talking with Gareth Pronovost, owner and founder of Gap Consulting. Gareth is a financial analyst turned Airtable consultant based just outside of Denver, Colorado. He helps businesses optimize their Airtable setup for maximum efficiency for their teams. Gareth and I discuss his path into this area of expertise, and he gives us a tour of Gap Consulting's own CRM, built in Airtable, of course. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, what's your day-to-day like? Sure. Thanks, Zoe. Um, yeah, and thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I, I started uh, my work or my career was in uh, finance. And so I was working in a corporate finance position and uh, was laid off and thought, you know, I, I want to start working for myself and build a consulting practice. And I didn't really have a clear direction of where that was going to be headed. Mm-hmm. And I thought I would just naturally kind of go into this finance uh, position and kind of be a generalist in finance, helping people with, uh, with that. And uh, I started doing a lot of research and kind of picking that up and started to uh, learn that I would really, I was really going to need to niche down in order to clearly define what it was I was offering. And, you know, up until that point, it was really just a blanket of, I can do all this stuff in accounting and finance. Um, which you know, is hard to communicate, right? Sure. And, uh, and at the time, I had a YouTube channel where I was you know, kind of talking about KPIs within business and you know, how to use different financial analysis techniques. And it really wasn't gaining much traction at all in full transparency. <laughs> it, was, it was just enough to get by in terms of you know, building that business. And uh, right. yeah. money was tight. Things were struggling. It wasn't, was not exciting. <laughs> and... Uh, and I read an article about Airtable in uh, in the in my Google News feed. It popped up one morning, and I thought, "Oh, that sounds like a cool tool. Let me go check that out." And uh, and I picked it up. And it's you know, being a finance expert, I, I worked in Excel uh, mm-hmm. pretty much all day, every day, right? And uh, and so when I picked up Airtable and started playing around with it, it was just really easy to translate from one into the other. Uh, I mean, there are massive differences when you really get into it uh, between the two softwares, but Mm -hmm. they function in a similar way, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. And, uh, and so, so it kind of led, you know, a a short learning curve for me to, to get up and running really quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, But even still, even at that point, I was still working as an analyst for small businesses doing KPIs and that kind of thing and hadn't turned on to Airtable yet uh, as a solution for them. And it wasn't until I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a CEO of his own company. And, uh, and I told him about Airtable in just a casual conversation. And three months later or so, you know, we, we bump into each other again. Uh, and he's you know, telling me, oh, I'm so glad you told me about Airtable. It's like changed my whole business from top to bottom. Like everything goes through there now. And I was like, oh, cool, man. I'm, you know, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I like it a lot too. And then it was, you know, a few days later and I was like, wait, that's the thing. <laughs> right. The thing. Yeah. And you know, it's just funny because I'm, I was sitting there day in day out looking for that thing and it was staring me in the face the whole time. So, um, but anyhow, long story short, uh, I, I realized pretty quickly that the things that I was doing with their table were far more advanced than the typical user mm-hmm. who didn't come from a vast background in Excel or uh, data analysis or database use, right? I mean, I think that's kind of a niche thing or a niche thing. Right, so, especially given how Airtable markets itself as something that's super approachable, right? It's like not everyone really kind of recognizes it for, for what it actually is, I think, right? Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, definitely niche, I think. Yeah, and you know, I think, I mean, just the way I know people use Excel, for example, or Google Sheets. Like, yeah, it's a great place that you can go store information. Like, that's like the really basic use case, right? And so is Airtable. But then there's like this whole other level underneath it that like, if you really know what you're doing with the software, like you can do some really cool stuff. Um, 
and, and of course I'm talking like the relationship between tables yeah. and, uh, and then getting, you know, more, uh, automated using Zapier as an automation tool and the way that it connects with that. Um, and not meaning to fast forward too much, but you know, what I tell my clients now is that I think of Airtable as uh, the heart of a business. And I think of Zapier as the cir circulatory system, uh, that it passes all of the, you know, information <laughs> through and uh, you've got to have Airtable there correctly structured, uh, kind of getting that, uh, getting that all organized. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like Airtable works so well, I think as a hub, right? Like that all the other sort of automations extend from, and it's, it's so interesting hearing you talk about um, sort of just falling backwards into Airtable because I, I kind of did the same thing. Um, I was working at a job, the company got acquired, I got laid off. Um, and I had been using Airtable just like for us, it was a fairly small company. So we were just like trying to figure out some systems, you know, to work as we grow. And I had been working on some Airtable stuff there, but I didn't really even recognize like knowledge of Airtable as a skill. You know, like you don't, right? You're right. like, I'm using an app. Like what, you know, whatever. Right, right. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, and you're like, and it's just like, it's just like Excel, Excel, you know? Like, I mean, it is really different, but you're, you're, it's just something, it's a tool, right? You don't think of it being like uh, an entity unto itself, sort of. And then, right. yeah, so I, I found myself jobless and I was like, well, I might as well just, you know, freelance and see what's out there until I pick up another job. And then I was like, oh, wow, so many people want this, this deeper functionality of Airtable. Um, but it's hard to, how do you, when someone asks you, what do you do? How do you describe it to them? Like a lay person who maybe even like doesn't even know what Airtable is. Yeah. So it's taken me a long time to kind of figure that out <laughs> and it's probably still a work in progress, right? right? I'm still hired. different answer every time. <laughs> right. Um, right now what I'm going with is I help businesses get organized and automated. Mm -hmm. I like I mean, that. That's, so that's my, yeah, back of the hand, like real quick, like throw it out there kind of thing. Right. I like that. So, so tell us about, um, what what is sort of your your general workflow right of course obviously you know you use Airtable you use Zapier that's sort of such a a broad uh you know spectrum right I'm sure all of your clients are like totally different um but do you want to talk about any sort of like maybe specific examples of things you've built or maybe even just like your your typical process or like one instance that sticks out of a, a project that you've worked on in this space yeah, sure. So, you know, it's it's funny because on one hand, I help people build these systems uh, using Airtable and Zapier. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I have to build the, these systems for my own business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the most important things for me in scaling a business is having systems and processes as automated as possible, as clear cut as possible in order to really help scale a business. Otherwise, without that, um, you know, you're really just a, a freelancer, right? And that's the big thing that I had to learn uh, starting out was how to different how how to differentiate myself as a business and not just a glorified freelancer. Right. But yes, to to, to answer your question, uh, my my I break up my time in week chunks. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are reserved for uh, client work. And so uh, at this point, I have a team of uh, three contractors that uh, work on me with all the you know, various projects that we do. Cool. And uh, so the first, what, about two hours, two and a half, three hours of my morning is dated to uh, prospective client calls. So folks who uh, have put time on my calendar to kind of see if uh, Airtable is a good fit for them and to hear about our services and how we might be able to help them. Uh, and so that's my morning and then uh, or at least four days a week and then the remainder of the day is spent doing uh, either client work or fun things like this um, <laughs> so yeah just kind of a, a mix cool uh, and then on Wednesdays I dedicate that to business development so Wednesdays are my day for focusing on how can we build more systems processes inside our business to 
uh, you know, to continue to grow and, and uh, be successful. So, uh, and then I think the, the big thing that really it took me from freelancer to business owner was, uh, was YouTube. So I started recording uh, and this, this is how I would kind of fell into Airtable. So I mentioned that I had been doing some right. videos. Yeah. And I thought, hey, I'm going to put one out for, uh, for Airtable. Like, I'll just do a real quick like intro, like, hey, this is what Airtable is and how you can just kind of get started in it real quick, just like real level stuff. Mm -hmm. And my wife was like, why are you going to, who cares? Like, <laughs> it's Airtable, like, it's so easy to use, you know, because she's an accountant. So, of course, she's really good in Excel too, right? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so she's like, well, why, you know, nobody's going to care. And I was like, well, hey, it's an experiment. Let me just try it out. And uh, I put that video out. And, uh, and then within a couple of weeks, you know, had like three or four folks had lined up to uh, speak with me about oh, how wow. I could help them with their table. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? Like, I guess this is working. So now at this point, I, I release another video every week uh, on YouTube. And I just do a quick, like, I try to keep them at about 10 minutes. And, um, and that's it. The whole focus is just doing a, a thing, what, whatever that like short thing is in Airtable. So whether it's building a specific automation using an Airtable view and Zapier, or uh, just a cool way to explore, let's say the roll up field was a couple weeks ago. Uh, Cause you know, that one can be a little complicated for, okay. you know, early users. So uh, just, you know, putting out some content on a regular basis and uh, it's been, it's been really fun. I mean, once, once that started taking off, I mean, it was typically overnight from the launch of that first you know, video. And that's when I realized, you know, as you had said, like kind of fell backwards into it. And I was like, Oh, people really need help with this. Like right. I'm yeah. happy to, you know, it's wild. I just, because I, I think also when I started, I found Airtable maybe the the beginning of 2016 or something and it was just like one of those apps where you're like oh this is like an app just like all of these other apps that you know I like to find apps it's it's fun to like look for new productivity tools but you don't know if like the app's gonna be there a year from now or like they might get bought they might like pivot and do something totally different um, but I, I think it's like Airtable is just adding so many new features all of the time and you know they just raised a bunch of funding so it's like clear you're like oh okay i can actually build something in this because it's going to stick around for a while right and that's something that i think i've even noticed within my clients questions that they would ask early on in this process were how do we know our table is going to be around mm -hmm. and those questions are entirely gone now i mean their latest um their latest valuation, as you just kind of alluded to, they just raised another hundred million plus uh, in private equity. They were valued at over a billion. I know. And uh, yeah, they're not going anywhere. And so I think that that is really helping to uh, give give people you know this, a sense of like, okay, I can really invest in building something here. Uh, the fun thing about Airtable is it's it's almost like a no tech solution, right, or a low tech solution. Mm -hmm. You can do all of this automation, all of this amazing stuff uh, using Airtable and Zapier. And, uh, and, and realistically, you don't even need to know code for the yeah. vast majority of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm no developer uh, at all. I'm, you know, and I, and I don't pretend to be. And I never thought in a million years that I'd find myself building solutions for businesses because even five years ago, I felt like in order to do that, you had to be a coder. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And not any longer. So, so how do you think to, to that end, how has your experience in finance, right? Being analytical, like you said, being comfortable working with data, how do you think that has kind of um, prepared you for, for this new venture? What, how, well, how does it couple well? Like what particular skills might you have that, um, you know, others may not? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think that you know, the thing, the thing about being in finance is you become at least the finance I was doing. You just, you get so good at Excel. Like I thought that I was good at Excel when I started my first job. <laughs> and then the people that I was working under and reporting to were like next level good. Mm -hmm. They brought me up. And then as is so often true with life, right? I mean, we're just kind of, you know, level up 
a mm. level at a time. And it brought me up and I was, I was amazed that they could do the things they could in Excel. And so I made it a point to become that good. Uh, and then I went to work for another place that, you know, leveled me up again. And it's just like, you know, kind of just continuous thing. Um, to the point where I really did take this approach with Excel that was basically like, you know, it's not coding because it's formula writing in Excel, right? But you learn how to structure data in such a way that you can work with it in the most uh, seamless and easy way. And my end goal in Excel, I actually remember asking the CFO of the last company I was working for, uh, I said, hey, can I, uh, would you would you mind paying for this um, training that I would really like to take? Uh, it's it was some dashboard training and building uh, dashboards essentially in Excel cool. that you know you could just get a data set, dump it into uh, a one page on or a single page or tab on Excel. Uh, it's been that long since I've worked in Excel. I know, I yeah. terms. <laughs> tab tables like tab page. Yeah, yeah forget it. Uh, <laughs> But you know, the idea was, hey, I just want to dump a CSV file into this uh, into this tab in Excel, and I want uh, an entire dashboard with interaction, interactive buttons, and the whole bit to be uh, to be readily available right. uh, based off of that data. And uh, he denied my request, and then subsequently laid me off. So, <laughs> um, which worked out best for everybody. Like, so oh wow, that was foreshadowing, huh? Um. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's why you didn't want to pay for that. Um, <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, uh, you know, I, I was trying to use that tool in that way, and it was just—I mean, this is just another, um, you know, funny undercurrent of how I got to where I am now, because, you know, now that's those, that's like a use case that you can do easily in Airtable with blocks. Right. Right. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I want to, you know, see like the total number of whatever I can just pull that in really easily. Or, um, yeah, with just summary fields and stuff like that, even creating summary tables, right. That would have taken so much longer in Excel. They're super quick. Um, oh yeah. But you being such, um, an Excel master, are there, spots that you've run into where you kind of were kind of hoping or expecting Airtable to be able to do something like Excel and you found that it was actually harder? Yes, definitely. Daily, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so so for example, let's suppose you were in Excel and you wanted to do uh, a sum if function, which in Excel means you're looking at a column, for example, let's say you have columns A and B, and column A has, uh, let me just pick a binary, zero or one. And column B uh, has uh, some dollar amount assigned, right? And so you've got, you know, zero or one dollar amount, zero or one dollar amount, blah, 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 blah. You can do a sum if on that very easily. Mm -hmm. Equal sum if, open parentheses, and then, you know, column B, I want to sum column B if column A is either zero or one, right? You can set up that kind of a rule very easily with the formula. Mm -hmm. In Airtable, it takes like 10 steps. <laughs> yeah, it does. Right? Because then you have to create a new column that's a filter, and then you, you like, and then you right. make, you know, roll up in another table. So, yeah, that's exactly. really a good example because I've run into that too. And you're like, oh, wait, I forgot this. I can still do this, but it's way more annoying. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, and then the other thing is, you know, with Airtable, I want to. I want to keep the data as clean as possible. I don't want all these unnecessary fields, even right. though I can hide them, right? I don't want unnecessary fields. Like, why would I? But in order to solve that very problem, I need to do a if statement formula, right? In a new field that says if column A is one or zero, you know, then, then bring in the number, otherwise don't. Mm -hmm. And then as you alluded to, roll up that field, right? right? But I have no purpose for that field other than this, summary in the block right so then i'm going to hide that field and it's just like why 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 <laughs> i know yeah and, and i think i mean i feel like we could probably do a whole separate episode just on like field management when you get to that point when you're like oh my gosh there's so many people working in the space there's fields that like no one should ever touch there's fields that like should only be used for data entry there's fields for like validation of that data entry it's like how do you even organize all that it's kind of um yeah, yeah, it can be overwhelming sometimes when you're like, wow, like I have this really great base, but oh, look, there's 200 fields in this table. Um, what am I doing? Right. right. And thank goodness for views. Um, 
you know, while we're like kind of on the topic, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I think is the hardest for new new Airtable users to wrap their head around. Because in Excel, you know, I would just open a new tab constantly, right? Like, yeah. oh, I want to do this new tab, you know. But in right. Airtable, like, I don't want to create a new table unless I have to create a new table. And I tell my clients, I'm like, listen, the the, the big difference here is when you create a table in, in, in Airtable, it needs to be unique to the data that lives in it. Like that data needs to live nowhere else in your base. Otherwise you're being redundant and not properly using the, the software, the way it's been structured. Right. right? Um, like just today, someone commented on one of my YouTube videos and said, well, I just realized that I can't uh, have a linked table in the primary column. Right, so the, the far left column of people, they can't link. And I'm like, well, yeah, you wouldn't want yeah, to. Because it's your, it's your primary key, right? To link to that other table. Like, right, so if you think that you need to link as your primary key to another table, then it's like by default, you should not be creating a new table. Right, right. Like, yeah, just keep that one table and link, link within it in another field if you have to. Um, totally. But yeah, so yeah, all of that sort of, it's there are definitely are really unique ways that Airtable manages data, some of which are like really awesome and way easier and others which are like just a little bit weirder, let's say. <laughs> so, so now why don't, um, I know you, you've prepared sort of a, a blank version of your personal CRM uh, to right. walk us through a little bit um, and kind of show us the, your, your build of a, um, you know, kind of customer management system. So, why don't you go ahead and uh, share your screen with us and give us sure. a little demo. Okay, so uh, there's a, probably too much to unpack here for just a quick uh, tutorial. So I think I'll go over like the main uh, functionality. Awesome. I think the vast majority, oh, quick tidbit before I get into the, the main functionality. My, my new favorite thing to add on almost all of my bases uh, and this of course uh, this of course is coming on the coattails of having just said never create a new table unless you have to um, <laughs> but i like i like to add a new table at the end that has uh, zapier integrations because nice when i produce for a client and i say okay here's your airtable base and we've got all these zapier integrations set up like how cool is it to also be able to say oh when things break in your zapier integrations because let's be real zapier can you know, it's it's a little temperamental sometimes. Um, sometimes, yeah. So, sure. if you know, if or if they if they bring on a new person who needs to, you know, kind of get up to speed really quickly. Um, and I'm sure I could incorporate more on you know th this, but this is just a standalone table with the name of the um, automation and then the trigger automated steps. And then I like to do a URL so that if they want to just really quickly get into you know, the automation into that zap, then they can just click right in. But anyway. That's nice. So. I like having documentation within the base itself. That way you don't have to handle another like doc, Google doc or whatever, you know, floating around somewhere. Um, yeah. Written down. You make, you make such a good point. Like it's funny because I'm constantly building, as I mentioned, you know, Wednesdays are my day to focus on the business and I'm mm -hmm. constantly building new tools for my business with Airtable. And it's like, it's, it, it's a continual process. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah. So the, the main functionality I think really lives in these uh, first two tables, both contacts and uh, interactions. Cool. And I, uh, you know, the, there's so many different ways that we could, you know, slice this, but in the master view, uh, which is kind of what I just call my default grid view that has no filters, no grouping, nothing. Um, all data obviously comes into my CRM, into the contacts table when they fill out a consultation request. So if I were to, for example, uh, have to get some time with myself. Um, not That's what Wednesdays are for, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, you know, whatever that information is, we'll, you know, just kind of fill this out. And uh, these are all questions that I use Calendly myself mm -hmm. to, uh, to book those engagements. 
And uh, I love Calendly. I realized that we could probably, and, and I have built something similar in Able, but I really just like Calendly. It's not that expensive. It works great. Yeah. I keep it as its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And so, so folks, uh, you know, will schedule with me and, you know, I'll get that email that, that they're scheduled. And once they've assigned a consultation date, you know, all of this information is populated per the integration with Zapier. And, you know, I ask them a lot of uh, kind of like vetting questions. I want to get a feel for how this consultation is going to go. Are we a good fit for them? Things like that. So uh, I definitely recommend these things uh, to anybody who's out there starting their own practice or, you know, just really kind of getting up to speed uh, with, with offering any kind of type of consulting services, because the more, you know, going into that call is, you know, generally better. And they also work as a bit of a filter, right? You, you don't want to set aside time on your schedule to talk to somebody who, um, you know, doesn't even have a business yet, but is considering, you know, a high ticket, you know, consultation engagement. It's like, this doesn't even make sense. Right. Like you don't, you don't even know what you need to solve yet. So how can I, <laughs> how can I fix it for you? Exactly. So, uh, and then one thing that I'm doing also is I've got this consultation table over here and these are the, uh, general questions that I like to ask on that call. And of course they're going to connect to the contact, right? So whoever mm -hmm. it is that I'm having that consultation with. So, uh, the really, well, I think it's fun thing about this is when, you know, once that data, I think I put enough data for that to get filtered into my pending. Let's see. Nope. I left something out. <laughs> there we go. Let me get that pre consultation going. Sorry. All good. Uh, that's prospect that's just, status. It just proves the filters are working correctly. That's all. <laughs> that's right. I was just testing it. Um, <laughs> so, so mo m much of the information that comes over from um, Zapier is, um, is, is, uh, dynamic, right? So their name is obviously, uh, coming in from Calendly, but then, uh, and this is something I don't see a lot of people taking advantage of. You can also send static information through a Zapier automation. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, I automatically set everyone's prospect status to pre-consultation and their project status is set to creating invoice. And I'll show you why in a moment it'll become clear as uh, cool. this kind of goes through. So then the procedure works like this. They will then appear in the pending consultations view. So when I start my morning, as I mentioned, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm handling consultations with my uh, you know, prospective clients. And so these are all organized by date and uh, team member, oh, you see team member in charge is blank here. Uh, that defaults to me as well, uh, at least for now, hopefully not forever. And. <laughs> And then I have a unique uh, consultation ID that is, uh, and this is a pre-filled form. As you can see here at the end of this uh, URL, it's getting filled in with my contact info. So we we'll sit down, um, I just open up my Zoom and uh, begin that call. And then I click here and in my second monitor, so I'm talking to them in one and in my second monitor, I'm kind of following along my consultation uh, script, if you will, right? And so I, you know, start off with like a bit of a, hey, how are you planning on using Airtable, blah, blah, blah. I can take notes directly in here, which of course is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, of course, the contact is already linked to the contact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ask them about wish list. You know, have you considered Zapier? Do you have any specific questions for me? Um, at one point, I had an hourly uh, versus project options. Uh, that is no more. So this obviously needs to get <laughs> updated. We'll get to that until next Wednesday. Um, <laughs> and then I like to make sure that we're on the same uh, time frame and all of that, uh, you know, that, that they're not going to expect something delivered in a time frame that we can't meet, et cetera. Before I had this built, this would probably take, you know, after every call, another five, 10 minutes to kind of get everything wrapped up. Mm -hmm. And now I just really quickly and easily point to one of these and we go from there. If they don't show up, they are going to get an automation per Zapier uh in an email that says hey sorry we didn't connect today uh if you want to reschedule you know you can reach me here if they're a bad fit nothing else to say uh if <laughs> hey. you know we had an hourly option at one point uh as i was mentioning so that's still legacy stuff that, that needs to get yanked mm -hmm. sometimes somebody will be a good fit but they want to uh put some documentation together before i send them a proposal mm -hmm. so that's what that 
info info needed is for, and then other case is ready for proposal. So once I do that, then jumping back into the, well, this will direct me to the, uh, the database if I hang on. And whoops, I don't want to actually go into my real one. Sorry. <laughs> all good, all good. And, uh, and so then, so here we are back to here. Now there's a zap that will uh, change their status because of course we were dealing with their status in the consultation, right? Mm -hmm. And so depending on how we marked that status in the consultation, uh, then that would uh, update here. Cool. And I'm realizing as we're going through this that there's no data living here because the URL here uh, facilitation is going back to my actual right. Yeah, so we had to so, that URL. It's okay. We understand, yeah. right? There Sorry, everybody. There. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. So yeah, there should be a record here that would then get uh, triggered. Uh, you know, trigger that Zapier integration, and then Excellent. this would get updated to whichever. Uh, if they were awaiting proposal, it would go here, and then they would be showing in the pipeline view. Uh, no, excuse me. Let me check the filters on here. It just works automatically. I don't even know what it does anymore. <laughs> oh, I bet because we didn't fill out, fill out that consultation form, right? Yep. You nailed it. That's why. So we'll just uh, go ahead and, and scrap that uh, condition in the mm -hmm. filter. So had we actually done the right way, uh, then it would appear here. And uh, of course, this is going to be filled out with their information that came in from the, the you know, setup and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the date uh, of the consultation. And then uh, there's another automation that happens that creates a new task for me with this contact that says that they are uh, ready for a proposal. And so much of this data rolls in automatically and some of this data I only use for specific things. So you can see this whole table is effectively the way that I organize my days and my time. Uh, and I've got different types of engagements that I go through either, uh, you know, I need to remember to send an email, I have a consultation, I need to send a proposal, maybe I'm recording a Loom video, whatever that may be, right? Uh, and so I just get all that data in here. And, uh, and so then the end result here is that when I, I am ready to send that proposal, and I try to do that within 24 hours, I will uh, copy the PDF and drop it here. And I don't even know what I have on my computer if I just pop up, but let's let's see what let's see what interesting <laughs> things come to life. Let's see what sample file we can find. <laughs> here's a here's just an image of, uh, of a sign that says organize and automate. So that seems like appropriate. Put it up there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you know once I've attached a proposal, then it will appear here, obviously through a, uh, a lookup. And uh, when I'm ready to send the proposal, I've got a Zapier integration set up to look specifically for this proposal sent, which is filtered to the type must be sent proposal and it must be check marked. So when a new uh, task appears in there, i.e. send proposal is check marked, then there's an automation that runs that sends the proposal with a link in Airtable. Um, that's basically, you know, self or, or addressed to the uh, pros pr uh, prospective client that says, hi, first name, had a great time talking with you. Thanks for sharing, you know, a little bit about your business with me. Uh, here's how we, how we can engage moving forward. And then it gives them a link to this proposal. Nice. So they get to actually see the proposal in Airtable. Um, you know, by, by selecting this link and, and seeing whatever it is that pops in there. So how, any questions about how that works? <laughs> uh, no, I love it though. It's just such a great way to, um, you know, talk the talk and walk the walk, I think, right? You know, not only are you creating things in Airtable, but you also use those same kinds of skills to automate your, your own workflow, which I think is just sort of a, a testament to how powerful it is, right? Um, since you you aren't like, I, I only build this for other people, but I also think it's the best solution for myself. Um, you make and, a good point. I think it would be kind of hypocritical if I wasn't using it myself. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. If you're like, oh no, I use Salesforce or something. Um, <laughs> Um, right. Um, but no, I love this. And I think it, it is something where like, you know, uh, our users could see it 
you know, it's not even just something that would be specific to your particular kind of business. This could definitely be adapted to, you know, a lot of different kind of uh, business quoting and proposal work project workflows. So thank you so much definitely. for the demo. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, that's really just kind of scraping the top of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, might, it, was, it was my pleasure kind of just showing that off. And uh, yeah, if if uh, anybody has any questions, I hope that uh, they are they feel free to get a hold of me and uh, ask how, how these things can help them. Oh, absolutely. Would you let everyone know where they can find you? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, my um, my name is Gareth Pronovost, and so my uh, company website is just GarethPronovost.com. Awesome. And then um, if you if they want to check out your YouTube videos, um, where should they go to do that? Is there a link on your website? There once was, but we're going we're currently going through a renovation. So okay. that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, what I can do if you send me the link to your YouTube channel, I'll include it in the show notes as well. So everyone can either go to garethprotovost.com or just check the show notes for um, your YouTube channel too, if they want to get more Gareth um, <laughs> before they reach out to you. Uh, well, thank you so much for this chat. I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, best of luck with, you know, growing your Airtable business and um, just, you know, kind of expanding in this space. It's a really exciting spot to be in, I think. It really is. Thank you for your time, Zoe. It's been a pleasure.